Hi guys! So I'm here with uh, a deck profile for preset 8 Genesis Fenrir. Um, I'm going to start out with the, the Forerunner. He's a GB1. Put him into your soul and then choose one of your vanguards and then once per turn you can uh, pull out a card and call it to Rhaegar that you soul blasted. That's not him. Um, he's pretty useful. Uh, I, I don't usually use him early game if I don't have the, the field to support like Doombrace's skill, but he's nice late game because he doesn't require a counter blast to pull everything out. So that's him. And then you got triggers, your four heals, obviously. And then I run eight crit triggers. She does nothing. But uh she is put into your soul, choose up to one of your Genesis and that unit gets 3,000 till the end of turn, um, which isn't bad. And then this is my stand trigger. I love the stand trigger, the greatest stand trigger ever. It pretty much keeps you from decking out, which is supremely important because you go through your deck pretty fast. Um, it's GB1, put it on top of your deck, and then you get to put all the cards from your drop zone into your deck and shuffle it. And then if you put back 10 or more cards, which you usually do, you get to draw a card. It's pretty cool. Okay. And then uh, your grade ones, you have the four perfect guards, obviously. Um, Goddess of the Decline Hell is just your standard uh, PGG. She unflips for you. You have one of her, you drop some. And then I run uh, four stride fodder. The Stride Fodder is also good because it can get you Fenrir if you have no if all you have is your backup grade three in your hand. Um, and then I run one Witch of Oranges. Uh, she says when this card is put into your drop zone from your soul, if you have a Genesis Vanguard, you can soul uh, soul charge two. Um, I like her because in a pinch she's she's good in the soul because she she allows you to soul charge. There aren't too many great grade ones in this deck beyond, obviously, like this guy, Hottie, he's your grade one heavy hitter, uh, GB1, every time you put a card into the drop zone from your soul, he gets a thousand power, um, so he's great, and then Claimer Harry, too, he's, uh, I run two of him, and he's GB1, when your card is put into the drop zone from your soul, put that card at the bottom of your deck and, and um, counter charge one. He's pretty good from in a bind too. Obviously, I prefer to get Hottie on the field, but he works pretty well if I need something to boost or if I um, need a counter charge. All right, and then grade two. You have your four Glyphnir. Um, Glyphnir, Glyphnir is your big Rhaegar soul charging power. He's a GB1 counterblast one with his unit attacks vanguard it's boosted. Um, you can soul charge three and then if you soul blasted that turn you can draw a card. So obviously he's like your big draw power of the deck and he's fills up your soul pretty quickly. So I like to get him on the field early game. Late game not so much because usually by late game you don't really need to do too much to fill your soul because you've, you've got other stuff going on and honestly with like I said how fast this deck recycles. Um, you can get pretty close to decking out late game, but he's definitely good um, in general and he's good early game. And then you have four Jormungand. He's basically the same as Hottie. GB1. When you, so every time you soul blast, he gets a thousand power. Um, I pref he's my preference, honestly, especially because nowadays there's so many different ways for, to, to soul charge. Um, I just prefer to hit you with a lot of power. I also won just one of uh, Witch of Raven's chamomile. I like, I, she's not like great, but she is good in a bind because she uh, is counter blast one. Um, when you soul blast her, when you put in your drop zone, she can come out and go in rear guard. So I just ran one of her. And this is uh, Twilight Regalia, Hesperus. Um, I like her a lot. Actually, I like to keep her in my soul and just keep soul blasting her out because she says that when you soul blast her, um, when this unit attack hits Vanguard, she's one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. So it doesn't usually, because it's on hit, it doesn't usually work. 
but does give some sort of like it does put some pressure behind the attack and he gets through and then you get to retire one of the rear guards and personally I think she's pretty cool. So that's the grade two slot. And then um, obviously for grade three you have four of the man himself. Abby McAb Ab, Mythic Beast Fenrir. So he has a, a GBD GB two skill, excuse me, that says so last three. When he attacks a vanguard, you can pay the cost. Um, they, and then he gets an extra crit, and your opponent can't call grade ones um, to guardian circle from hand to guardian circle. And then obviously he's the on stride. She's the stride boss. So when you stride over him, you get to soul charge three. And once a turn, if you so choose, you can counter blast and pull a card out of your soul to rear guard. Um, so I, I don't usually use his GB2, but it's really nice when you can't stride because it's pretty good. Um, and then obviously his stride skill is awesome because it just keeps filling your soul up and it gets, makes it pretty easy to get to Vanagrand. Um, and then his pull out of the soul is great too. Personally, I like to fill the soul with as many rear guards as I possibly can. So obviously you want to soul blast trigger so that you can get it into your drop zone and then use your stand trigger to get back into your deck. Um, but I think it's especially great to just keep your soul full of rear guards because there's so many different ways to pull out rear guards from your deck that, uh, you know, they blow up your stuff, fine. Soul blast three, pull out another Yorman gun. Um, I I think it's, it's, it's very helpful. <laughs> and then I don't know... Everybody for Genesis deck seems to have it like a different backup. Um, I run three of Sunlight Goddess Yadagratsu, I think is how you pronounce her name. She's a fairly older guard, she has like a limit break, but I love her. Because her limit break four is you Soul Blast nine, and then you get to stand up two of your rear guards. So, it's amazing to me, because you get to Soul Blast nine, which adds some serious power to both Norman Gun and Hottie, and then you can stand them up. So she's, it, you don't usually get to Soul Blast 9. I have found that usually before you get to that point, you've either beaten them or they've beaten you. Um, but it's a pretty great finishing move in my opinion. And then also, if you ride her, she does have a skill that says during the battle when you're attacked, you can choose to put um, a card from your Guardian Circle into their soul. Um, you can only use it once, once per like, battle, but I, it's pretty, it's not too bad if you get, if you get no Fenrir and she's on there, at least you're able to use her to put cards into your soul. So I like her a lot. Okay, so moving on to the G-Zone. Got your two Doom Brace. So he's once per turn, uh, Soul Blast 3, and then you can choose up two of your rear guards and give them 5k. And then, um, if you have two or less in your soul, you can actually refund that soul charge, which is by soul charging three, which is a good early game because you don't have a lot of soul. So he's my first stride usually. Um, and like I said earlier, I like to soul blast my units out of the soul. So a lot of the time I'll only have two units on the field. Um, and so that I'll keep my forerunner out and not put him in until later and just use Fenrir's skill to call um, things out of the soul. So that way I can give 5k to the, the forerunner. So, he's a good first drive. And then obviously you have your Vanagrand. He's your goal. He's ridiculous. He's just completely unfair. Um, so he's uh, GB2, so blast 6. And then unflip. And then uh, with his unit attacks of Vanguard, you can pay the cost. And then you get to check the top four cards of your deck. Um, put them in any order that you want. And then put them back on top of your deck. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, and then the best part of this is, of course, that they have to guard before you do this, so they don't get to see how many cards you put on top of your deck. So even if you end up drawing all four and then just putting them all at the bottom, it doesn't matter because they've already guarded. Um, which is usually why they should PG, because if they don't, you can, you know how to bypass their number and if you're going to or not. So he's the best. Um, Ty, Tier? Something like that. <laughs> Uh, he's the new guy from, like, Fighter's Collection. Uh, he's once per turn, so last three. Um, you can look at the top 
card of your deck, put it on the top or the bottom. And then um, if your drive check reveals a grade one or greater, you can soul charge three. Um, he's not bad, to be honest. I hardly ever use him. But he's he's a good backup, especially if you haven't gotten the soul for whatever reason to get to Vandegrand. He's a good way to, like, beef up your soul. Plus he lets you check that, check that top card, which isn't ever a bad thing. So I run two of him. Um, and then I run two of Dion. She's basically, like, she's she's not bad. She's uh, Soul Charge 3, and then look at the top three cards, search for one card among them, and put it into your hand and the rest into your soul. Which is, is actually pretty good, it's just the, that the other strides are better, and quite frankly, when I G assist, she's the thing I throw away. Um, but she's a good backup, especially because, like, she's on hit. So, like, if you really can't do anything, you just ride her and focus as well. And then, obviously... Uh, 4G Guardians. Um, it's pretty much what we got right now. So, it's Goddess of Seven Colors, Iris, and she says that you can choose up to three cards from your drop zone and put them into your soul, and then if you put up to three, if you put it in three cards, you get the extra 5k shield. Um, I like her a lot, honestly. She's been extremely helpful half the time. She, like, this game has been way easier because now it's just so much easier to get cards into my soul and the best part of her is that even if you don't get the 5k shield you can still put like one or two cards in your drop zone if that's all you have um and you don't get the power but you still have an extra one or two cards in your drop zone which is and in your soul which is awesome so she's made this a lot a lot easier to like hit the six for banagrand and keep hitting what you're doing i've hit the nine for sunlight a lot more frequently since i started using her so, uh, that is preset 8. You may notice that there's 4 cards for the G-Zone. Uh, 14 cards for the G-Zone. I'm not really sure how that happened, but there just wasn't, I guess, anything that interested me. Which is fine, because now there's just those two slots for Fenrir. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked it. And I will see you after set 8 for the next deck profile.